example, during the trial, the court heard testimony from Clinton Yamada, Dan Dennison, Lino Kamakao, Ivan Tamura, and received exhibits into evidence. This included photographs, a video recording, as well as a map and web page from the Department of Transportation. Court also heard arguments by counsel. The court makes the following decision based upon the credible evidence at trial. There is no dispute in this case that this incident occurred on July 17, 2019 in the district of North Hilo County in state of Hawaii. All of defendants in this case were charged with obstructing in violation of Hawaii Vice Statutes, Section 711-1105-1A and 5. One of the elements of Hawaii Vice Statutes, Section 711-1105-1A, is that an individual knowingly or recklessly obstructs any highway or public passage. Obstruct is defined in Hawaii Vice Statutes, Section 711-1100. Obstruct means renders impassable without unreasonable inconvenience or hazard. Mr. Yamada testified in this case. He is a civil engineer with the State of Hawaii Department of Transportation for 19 years in the Highways Division for the Island of Hawaii. He reviews all of the permits that come in. There are three different kinds of permits he reviews. Permit to perform work upon state highways, oversize and overweight vehicle permits, occupancy and use permits. In this case, there was testimony from Chief Lino Kamakao regarding wide load vehicles going up Malka on Mauna Kea Access Road for TMT and that access on Mauna Kea Access Road on July 17, 2019 was restricted. Mr. Yamada testified that no permits were submitted for review in July 2019 and no permits were issued. No permits issued for movement of oversized or overweight vehicles based upon the evidence in this case. That is the record in this case. Evidence that Mauna Kea Access Road was closed or restricted to the public coupled with no permits equals no obstruction. There would be no unreasonable inconvenience or hazard. The court does appreciate the example the state gave in its closing argument regarding road race or marathon. If a third party blocks the road, you're still blocking a closed road. However, in this case, the testimony is that there were no permits issued. No permits for any oversized or overweight vehicles as described by Chief Kamakao in his testimony regarding wide load vehicles. The court cannot find that there was unreasonable inconvenience or hazard. The state has failed to meet their burden beyond a reasonable doubt as to the element of obstruction. Court finds Marie Brown and Renette Robinson not guilty of Hawaii Revised Statutes Section 711-1105-1A and finds Kili Iwane and Maxine Kahaulelio not guilty of Hawaii Revised Statutes Section 711-1105-1A and 5. Anything further from the state? On Tuesday evening, a magnitude 4.6 earthquake shook Hawaii, but there was no observable impact on the island's volcanoes. The eruption of Kilauea continues at the summit and the volcano alert level remains at watch. The earthquake occurred at 8.36 p.m. Hawaii time, 20 miles deep under the southwest rift zone. The USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory said the quake was part of the ongoing seismic swarm under the Paha Lut area, which started in August 2019. The eruption is now one week old and remains confined to the summit caldera within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. New video released today by the USGS shows the dominant fountain at the west vent, with sustained heights of up to 15 meters or 49 feet. The video also shows another fountain source emerging through the lava lake. Over the past 24 hours, the lake level rose approximately 2 meters or 7 feet, with a total rise of about 31 meters or just over 100 feet since the new eruption began. Gas emissions remain high but are on a downward trend. 
Sulfur dioxide rates were measured at 6,000 tons per day on October 5th. Scientists continue to closely monitor the eruption and will issue daily updates until further notice. Stunning video from above recently captured the eruption at Kilauea, which continued on Monday. A large earthquake that shook Hawaii the day before has had no apparent effect on the island's volcanic activity. On Sunday, a magnitude 6.2 earthquake struck off the southern coast at 11.48 a.m. Hawaii time. Scientists with the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory reported that the 22-mile depth, location, and seismic waves of the event suggest it happened due to the bending of the oceanic plate from the weight of the islands, a common source for earthquakes in this area. Other than a few minor rock falls of the Kilauea caldera, there were no impacts to the ongoing eruption. This video was recorded by Mick Calver on October 9th. At the time of the flight, the lava fountains from the west vent were reaching heights of 15 meters, or nearly 50 feet. The fountain has created a spatter cone with a 10-meter or 33-foot-wide opening, which feeds lava east towards the crater lake. The lava lake continues to slowly rise and has had a total increase of about 38 meters, or 125 feet since the eruption began on September 29th. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory recently published a graphic illustrating how deep the lake is, showing how if New York City's Empire State Building was placed at the bottom of the crater, the lava lake level would be as high as the 70th floor. Seismicity and volcanic gas emission rates remain elevated, and the eruption is confined to the summit crater within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. No unusual activity has been observed in the Kilauea East Rifts Zone. Scientists will continue to closely monitor the eruption and issue daily updates until further notice. The new eruption at Kilauea Volcano continues and the first videos of the event have made it to the internet. The USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory is monitoring the activity from a closed area within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Among the first videos was this one showing the dominant lava fountain that emerged on the summit crater floor. Overnight, scientists say the solidified floor of the lava lake was already covered by more than 36 feet or 11 meters of new molten lava. The level of the activated lava lake continues to slowly rise. The eruption began on the floor at 3.20 p.m. and an hour later, a new vent opened on the west wall of the crater. The initial moments were captured in this video. In time, the activity on the west wall grew to include multiple vents. With the new eruption comes a new special weather statement from the National Weather Service in Honolulu. Forecasters said areas of volcanic glass, or Pelly's hair, were observed near the summit Wednesday evening and were reported by pilots in the vicinity. On the ground, scientists have documented tephra accumulating downwind of the active vents. Residents and visitors are urged to minimize exposure to volcanic emissions. Those with respiratory sensitivities should take extra precaution to minimize exposure. As of Thursday morning, the current volcano alert level for Kilauea remains at warning, and the current aviation color code is red. At this time, all activity is confined to the summit area within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Scientists say they will continue to monitor the eruption for changes in activity and volcanic hazards. The eruption of Kilauea Volcano continues at the summit caldera, and while the alert level was downgraded on Monday evening from warning to watch, lava is still erupting from multiple vents and filling the lava lake below in the crater. Today, USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory released some new video showing the active lava fissures. 
Scientists say the west vent continues to be the most vigorous source with occasional bursts up to 20 meters or 66 feet. The lava lake has risen to the base of the west vent where a spatter rampart is being built. Over the past 24 hours, the lava lake level has risen approximately 1 meter or 3 feet. Seismicity and volcanic gas emission rates are still elevated. Sulfur dioxide readings remain high with preliminary measurements on October 4th of approximately 7,000 to 9,000 tons per day. Summit instruments continue to record deflationary tilt. The USGS published this reference map on October 5th. It shows the location of the two eruptive vents that were active at the time the map was made. It also shows the position of several islands on the lava lake surface that were present during the previous five-month eruption. Some of these islands were initially drowned by lava but later floated back to the top. The surface of the lava lake is now at approximately 2,530 feet, or 771 meters above sea level. Active lava is now visible from two public visitor overlooks in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. All lava activity remains confined to the summit within the national park, and no unusual activity has been observed in the East Rift Zone. Kilauea Volcano continues to erupt at its summit, with multiple vents along the crater floor and western wall, feeding into an active lava lake. As of Sunday morning, all lava activity is confined to the summit caldera, within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. The USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory reports seismicity and volcanic gas emission rates remain elevated. The amount of sulfur dioxide was higher than the previous day, and was measured at approximately 14,750 tons per day. These time-lapse videos recorded by USGS webcams capture the ongoing activity in the crater. Over the past 24 hours, the lava lake level has risen over 1 meter or more than 3 feet. This image, posted to the HEO website, provides a good look at the changes to the lake since the new eruption began on September 29th. In total, the molten surface has risen approximately 27 meters or 89 feet since the start of the event. Geologists say the west vent continues to be the most vigorous source, with sustained lava fountain heights of 10 to 15 meters, or 33 to 49 feet. A comb is being built around it. Other vents continue to be active, including a 35-meter or 115-foot-long fissure in the central and southern parts of the lava lake. On the surface, localized crustal foundering continues, and scientists say that due to the location of the vents, the lava lake is not level. The west end is three to six feet higher than the east end. HEO notes that no unusual activity has been observed in the volcano's east rift zone. Scientists say they will continue to closely monitor Kilauea and provide daily updates on changing conditions.